Hello students. In this problem, we're not going to solve this differential equation, um, this Gompertz function, um, nor are we going to look at the phase plane. Um, I do that in two other videos, so look for those um, regarding the Gompertz function. Um, in this problem, I'm going to answer the question, um, at what values of p does the population grow the fastest? Okay, so you want to know where the max acceleration is in the uh, population. So first things um, I should point out in uh, this question is first, um, when we're talking about growth, we're talking about change in the population. So that refers to the first derivative. And fastest, um, the fastest change in the derivative is where the uh, max acceleration occurs, okay? Um, so, um, or the max, sorry, the max change in the population occurs. So the first thing I do is I differentiate this um, equation again. Uh, so I'm going to find the inflection point, right? The max of the derivative is an inflection point. There's another way to look at it. So um, I have to take the second derivative and set it equal to zero. So I differentiate this um, Gompertz function. Now when I do that, um, remember I'm using c is 0 0.15 and k is 1,000. Uh, when I do that, I take the derivative of the natural log term here, k over, k over p, where k is 1,000 and I leave the p alone, I leave this p alone, plus the 0 0.15, which is what I'm using for c, times the natural log left alone, times the derivative of p with respect to t, okay? Now let's compute these derivatives. So when I compute the derivative of the natural log term, I get one over its argument, so one over 1,000 over p, so that's gonna be the reciprocal of 1,000 over p, and then I have to use a chain rule um, because p is a function of t, I have to take the derivative of 1,000 over p. Uh, nothing changes in this term here, so I just bring that down. Now, if I take the derivative of 1,000 over p, um, I, that's like p to the minus 1. Bring the minus 1 down, and you get p to the minus 2, so that's 1,000 over p squared. However, this is easy to forget. You have to take the derivative of the p again, okay? So this is the chain rule. So p is a function of t, so I have to multiply this by dp dt. Again, that's a chain rule. So you take the derivative of the outside function, which is the p to the minus one, then you multiply that by the derivative of the inside function, which is the dp dt. Nothing changes on this term, so I just bring that down. Here I took the reciprocal, one over 1,000 over p is just the reciprocal of that, so I get p over 1,000. Now in the next term, um, next line, I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. I factor out the minus sign. Um, I have the 0.15. P times this P is P squared. 1,000 is there. I have the 1,000 over P squared here. DP, DT just comes down. Nothing changes in that term. Now the P squared over P squared cancels. We get a 1. 1,000 over 1,000 cancels. We get a 1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a minus 0 0.15 from both of these terms. So when I do that, this plus sign will become a minus. I will also factor out a dp dt from this term and this term. When I factor out the dp dt, I'm left with the 1 that's here from the canceling out. So that's where the 1 is. This Remember, this minus sign comes from the fact that I factor out a minus 0.15. And the only term left standing is this natural log right here. Now, um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to insert the dp dt right here. Now, remember, dp dt is the differential equation, so that comes from up here. And this term here is that one left alone. Now, if I want the second derivative to be equal to 0, then this term on the right-hand side has to be equal to 0. So I set that equal to 0. So just hang on. We're almost to the finish. I set... This is just like solving a quadratic equation, right? Um, you know, if you have a product of two terms that are equal to zero, then one or both um, are equal to zero. One or the other or both are equal to zero. So I take this term, I set it equal to zero. 0.15 times 0.15 is 0.15 squared. Bring the minus sign down. Natural log of 1,000 over p times p. Okay, set that equal to zero. This has two possible solutions. Um, when the natural log is equal to one, I'm sorry, when the natural log is equal to 0, then this argument is equal to 1, so that's true when p is 1,000, and when p is 0. But we're going to throw the p equals 0 because this is a population, and uh, we can't divide by 0 in the Gompertz model. So that leaves us with this term to um, uh, reconcile. 
Now remember that this P equals 1000 is an equilibrium solution. You can check that out in my video on the phase plane analysis. Now to solve this equation, I move the natural log to the other side, and um, I just look at that as natural log of 1000 over P equals one. I exponentiate both sides, so the exponential of the natural log, their inverse functions, I just get the 1000 over P, and uh, that's equal to E to the one, and uh, then I just um, cross multiply the P over on the right side, I bring E down and I get that P is equal to 1000 over E. And this is where I have a critical point for the second derivative. And you could use a um, derivative test to check that when you're below 1000 um, over E, this, um, this term here is increasing. And when it is um, beyond 1000 over E, um, it's decreasing. So this is indeed going to be a maximum. So you can do that with test points. Um, I don't want to spend any more time with that. I'll let you um, uh, uh, check that out on your own. Um, I needed to go through this whole process to get to this um, max acceleration. All right.